hi there in this video we are going to discuss about eicosanoids 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 are basically uh, derivative of arachidonic acid these are derivative of arachidonic acid and these include three principal classes of compound which are thrombozenes thrombozenes prostaglandins and leukotrienes so these are three principal classes of compound which are called eicosanoids which are a deri derivative of arachidonic acid arachidonic acid is a 20 carbon atom unsaturated fatty acid it is also called it is also one of the omega 6 fatty acid and it is found in the cellular membranes in association with phosphatidylinositol or it is synthesized from linoleic acid linoleic acid is uh, extended and converted into saturated extended and converted into the uh, arachidonic acid so uh, arachidonic acid is synthesized from sessional fatty acid which is a linoleic acid or it is present in the cellular membrane in association with the phosphatidylinositol and it is converted into three classes of compound which are thrombozenes prostaglandins and leukotrienes so how they are synthesized here uh, to know their synthesis we should be knowing that there is an enzyme which is prostaglandin prostaglandin endo peroxide synthase prostaglandin endo peroxide synthase enzyme is responsible for the synthesis of a parent prostaglandin which is pgh2 pgh2 this enzyme has two activities what is cyclo oxygenase activity or cox activity and other is peroxidase activity it is a single protein which has two enzymatic activity cox activity and peroxidase activity and it is an endoplasmic reticulum bound uh, enzyme okay so depending upon cellular type this cox is also has of two types cox1 and cox2 cox1 is constitutively present in different tissues while cox2 is inducible one and cox2 is principally involved in the inflammatory response so uh, what happens you know uh, if i try to summarize if i try to uh, summarize here uh, this is uh, arachidonic acid this is arachidonic acid uh, which is converted to prostaglandin let me drag it here this is arachidonic acid uh, which is converted into prostaglandin pgh2 and in its conversion to pgh2 in its conversion to pgh2 an intermediate is formed which is which is pg pgg2 okay and this conversion is brought about by cyclo oxygenase activity it is brought about by cyclo oxygenase activity and it can be by cox1 in some tissues and in some tissue it can be by cox2 which is the activity of uh, endoperoxide synthase so PGG2 is converted to PGH2 by peroxidase activity of same protein it is converted here by peroxidase activity of same protein so prostaglandin endoperoxide synthase which was an endoplasmic reticulum membrane bounded enzyme or protein converts arachidonic acid first into prostaglandin GG2 and then this G2 is converted to prostaglandin H2 and first conversion was cox cyclooxygenase activity and second conversion is by peroxidase activity then this prostaglandin h2 is converted into thrombozen a2 it is converted into prostaglandin i2 it is converted into prostaglandin f2 alpha it is converted into prostaglandin e2 okay so uh, we need not to go into detail the fraction which are involved in these conversions we just should be knowing their individual roles here So, so thrombozen A2 is involved in the. It is produced principally in platelets. It is produced in the platelets, and what does it do? It promotes platelet aggregation. It promotes platelet aggregation, and promotes and promotes vasoconstriction. It promotes platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction, and it also promotes the contraction of smooth muscle cells. Okay. 
So, prostaglandin I2 or prostacyl in it is produced into the endothelial cell, it is produced in endothelial cell which form the blood vessel and it promotes vasodilation, it promotes vasodilation and it inhibits, it inhibits platelet aggregation, it inhibits platelet aggregation, so its role is opposite to thrombus in A2. Then prostaglandin <coughs> F2-alpha, it is involved in the vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction, constriction of smooth muscle, smooth muscle cell constriction and uterine contraction, promotes uterine contraction and prostaglandin A2 is involved in the vasodilation and relaxation of smooth muscle and can be used to induce labor, can be used to induce labor, it means it can promote uterine contraction. So, these are the different roles of prostaglandins and thrombosins. Next, this arachidonic acid can be converted by another pathway, here enzyme works lipooxygenase, lipooxygenase by this enzyme it can be converted into another compound which is 5-hydropyroxy eicosa tetranoic acid, 5-hydropyroxy eicosa tetranoic acid which is a parent compound and this parent compound is converted into different leukotrienes, leukotrienes in A4, leukotrienes C4, D4, E4 and leukotriene B4. So, these leukotrienes are principally involved in the, uh, these leukotrienes are principally uh, involved in the uh, pathogenesis of the, these leukotrienes are principally involved in the uh, inflammatory pathogenesis. So, uh, we should be uh, knowing that arachidonic acid by lipoxygenase pathway is converted to hydroxychloroquine tetranoic acid which forms leukotrienes and these leukotrienes are involved in the inflammatory pathogenesis. Uh, they can cause uh, the activation of WBCs, WBCs activation, they increase vasoconstriction, they lead to bronchoconstriction or bronchospasm. So, they can cause asthma as well, they are involved in the pathophysiology of asthma here. So, next uh, uh, it was, uh, we should be knowing that arachidonic acid was coming from linoleic acid or phosphatidylinositol from the membrane, so cellular membrane in phosphatidylinositol which was anchoring arachidonic acid. So, it is released from phosphatidylinositol by enzyme working here which is, which is phospholipase A2 enzyme, phospholipase A2 enzyme which was working here. So, this is a brief overview of uh, thrombosin, leukotrienes and prostaglandins. Now, we come towards some tricky points. So, COX-1 is present in some tissues. COX-2 is present in some tissues. COX-2 is inducible and it is involved in the pathophysiology of inflammation. COX-1 is constitutive present in the most tissues and required for the proper functioning of stomach and kidneys. Stomach and kidneys role involved in the uh, proper functioning of stomach and kidneys. So, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and acid which include aspirin, which include dichloran, diclofenic sodium, which include ketorolac and so on. These non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are non-selective COX inhibitor. They inhibit, they inhibit both COX-1 and COX-2. So, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug including aspirin inhibit both COX-1 and COX-2 and they play their anti-inflammatory role in this way by inhibition of COX and uh, due to inhibition of COX-1, they damage stomach and kidneys function. So, due to inhibition, their side effect is they damage stomach and kidney function due to inhibition of COX-1 and by inhibition of COX-2, they prevent inflammation and they treat inflammation. So, I am point here is low dose aspirin low dose aspirin prevents the risk of MI, low dose aspirin decreases MI risk and decreases stroke risk. How it happens? So, uh, in the platelets, in the platelets, the enzyme working here is, in the platelets, enzyme working here is COX-1 and in the endothelial cell, enzyme working here is COX-2. So, in endothelial cell, COX-1 is working <coughs> which is promoting platelet aggregation, vasoconstriction and so on and in 
in uh, endothelial cell cox2 is working which forms prostaglandin i2 and uh, lead to vasodilation and inhibits platelet aggregation so cox1 and cox2 here work opposite to each other so when we give aspirin to a person when we give aspirin to a person aspirin inhibits the synthesis of thrombosin a2 in platelets and inhibits synthesis of prostaglandin pgi2 in, in smooth uh, in the endothelial cell however the platelets are don't have nucleus they don't have nucleus so they remain inhibited platelet aggregation remain inhibited due to aspirin however however endothelial cell have nucleus so they synthesize more messenger rna so they synthesize by messenger rna new cox2 so they upper regulate their cox2 so prostaglandin pgi2 synthesis in endothelial cell continues so when prostaglandin pgi2 synthesis continues in endothelial cell so their inhibitory role on, on uh, platelet aggregation continues so they continue to inhibit platelet aggregation so aspirin prevents mi and stroke so let me uh, describe it again in platelets cox1 works which leads to the platelet aggregation in endothelial cell cox2 works which lead to the production of prostaglandin i2 and inhibits platelet aggregation when we give aspirin which inhibits both cox1 and cox2 what happens platelet aggregation by cox1 and thrombosin a2 remains inhibited because platelets don't have nucleus and so they cannot synthesize new enzyme and their already present enzyme is inhibited however the endothelial cell have nucleus they synthesize messenger rna and they up regulate cox2 so prostaglandin pgi2 synthesis continue in endothelial cell due to this up regulation so platelet function is inhibited and in this way aspirin reduces the risk of mi and stroke so aspirin Uh, inhibits both cox1 and cox2 and it's how the aspirin protects mi and stroke next we should be know the role of corticosteroids 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 inhibit phospholipase a2 enzyme they play their inhibitory role here and when they inhibit this function no lactadenic acid form no cox1 cox2 role and so on so all these pathways inhibited so they uh, play their anti inflammatory role here in this way however Uh, their side effect comes on the stomach and kidneys as well due to inhibition of cox1 okay so it is how uh, steroid work and it is how non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs work and this cox2 in inducible and it is inducible in response to the uh, cellular injury markers which are different cytokines endotoxin growth factors tumor promoter and so on so uh, Uh, to tackle the risk of the stomach and kidney damage selective cox inhibitor cox2 inhibitor are designed selective cox2 inhibitor are designed for inflammation which include salicoxib so when this selective cox2 inhibitor are chronically used are used for long time what happens they inhibit this prostaglandin pgi2 synthesis so what happens platelet aggregation occurs and when platelet aggregation occurs mi risk increases so salicoxib or cox2 inhibitor are linked to the increased mi risk due to inhibition of prostaglandin pgi2 synthesis so it was all about here prostaglandin and thrombosins next we come towards leukotrienes so these leukotrienes are involved in the pathophysiology of uh, asthma so one more thing is uh, if we use aspirin to block cox1 and cox2 all the arachidonic acid diverted in lipooxygenase pathway and when it is diverted here leukotrienes are produced so asthma occurs so aspirin toxicity can cause asthma as well due to increased production of leukotrienes uh, due to blockage of this pathway so uh, this liquid how leukotrienes are managed to manage leukotrienes leukotrienes uh, blockers receptor blockers are used uh, which include the leukotriene receptor blockers and anti leukotriene drugs that you should include montelukast and montelukast and zafirlukast which block leukotriene role and used in the treatment of asthma so it was a brief overview of the thrombosins leukotrienes and uh, prostaglandins now we should uh, uh, remember one diagram here how aspirin uh, inhibits cox1 and cox2 so this is the structure of aspirin here c double o h o and then here is acetyl group c12 bond oxygen ch3 this is aspirin uh, this is cox1 and this is cox2 what does it do it does acetylation of cox1 and cox2 cox1 become acetylated acetylated cox1 and acetylated cox2 and this acetyl group is removed from aspirin now because it is attached to cox1 and cox2 so this aspirin is converted into 
this structure and what is this structure this is salicyclic acid so aspirin reacts with cox1 and cox2 gets converted to salicyclic acid and uh, these cox1 and cox2 become acetylated so it they become inactive and these are acetylated so uh, it was all about today's lecture thank you